Hi, I'm Art Wiggins. Welcome to another episode of The Art of Physics. Today we are at the wonderful Wabik Country Club and we're here on a special mission. Our special mission is to find out about this game, this wonderful game called golf. Now golf, golf. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Art. Yeah? It's golf. G-O-L-F. No, it isn't, Richard. I actually did my homework. This is Richard Gibbs. Oh, Hi, hello. Richard. Hello. Um, I did my homework, Richard, and in 1579, the King of Scotland issued an edict prohibiting the game of golf. G-O-W-F. Golf. No, no. So, golf. G-O-L-F. L-F. Well, maybe we should go a little further in history then, because in 1681, um, James, the Duke of York, and another Scotsman played two Englishmen in the first known tournament of England versus Scotland. Really? Yeah. So who do you think won? Wow. England. Ah, the Scots won. Of course. That's why Scots invented the game of golf, according to them. Oh. So that was 1681. And uh, actually, as it turned out, James of York became the king of Scotland later. Right. And then finally, he became the king of England. Really? So, yeah. And I think actually we're going to be showing um, to the viewers at home. We can't see it here, but the viewers at home are going to see that foursome as they were playing in 1681. Really? Yeah, it's amazing. Fabulous. I'll show you the picture later. Fabulous. Yeah, well. So, Art, I don't understand it. Well, neither does anybody else. In fact, that's so true that many of our leaders play golf. And I even have a couple of graphics that David's going to put in. And the graphics show some of our leaders playing golf. There's one case where there are three presidents of the United States playing together in a foursome. One was Gerald Ford, one was H George H.W. Bush, and the third was Bill Clinton. Now, how do you like that three out of a four game deal? That's, that's, that's for quite, golf. That's quite a threesome. Is that goo? No, wait a minute. Is it goo for golf? I'm just, you know, I'm golf. L. Golf. OK, thank you. Um, yeah, that's probably about as good as we're going to get out of those guys. Anyway. Uh, then there's another one that actually shows POTUS. You know who POTUS is? POTUS. POTUS. No. President of the United States. POTUS. Oh, POTUS. POTUS, POTUS right, and V POTUS uh, are playing Obama. President golf. Obama. President Obama are playing golf on the White House putting green. Really? Yeah. So if you can believe that, our leaders play golf. So this must not be that bad a game. Okay. Maybe I can learn to say it right. Golf. Golf. Okay. I think it makes sense. So. This game of golf is an odd kind of a thing because really, you know, the freshman physics people that I used to teach study golf, not really golf. They study projectile motion. And it turns out that projectile motion, that's pretty much what golf is, except freshman physics studies it in such a way that they do it in a vacuum so that there's no air. And so if you have a vacuum trajectory, which is what they call a path that the ball would take, then the maximum angle, or the maximum distance, really, is reached at a 45 degree angle of launch. So if you launch it at 45 degrees, then the ball goes as far as it's going to go. If you launch it higher, it goes up and then down and stops short. If you launch it lower, it never gets there. So 45 degrees is the best angle. Now, now, Art, that's really too much information. Oh. For me. Okay. I mean, all I want to do is look at that ball and hit it way out there. That's uh -huh. all I care about. Well, then, then you've got to get a little more modern than freshman physics because we're actually playing in air rather than a vacuum. There's no vacuum here. Is there a vacuum this here? true, true. <sighs> no, it smells good. It's air. So uh, what happens is air does a funny thing. When you hit a golf ball, when you hit an anything in air, if the thing that you hit spins, then extra forces get added by the air. The Bernoulli effects, the kind of same thing that happens that keeps airplanes up. So that what happens is the air flowing causes forces to occur. And so when you hit a ball and you hit it in such a way that the ball has spin on it, then what happens is that backspin pulls the ball up because there's a lift force. And the result is it goes way further. You could hit your nine iron at a 45 degree angle and get about 100 yards. But if you hit a driver, then you would get much more distance than that. So. Um, that's, uh, I think it's obvious to anybody who plays this game. Uh, maybe it's not so obvious to freshman physics people, but right. they eventually figure it out. So, <laughs> all right. Now, you're telling me it's all the way the ball spins. 
A lot of it is the ball spinning. But there's got to be true. more to it than that, I'm sure. Well, there's a little more. I'll tell you a little bit more, actually, because these darn things, anybody that's ever noticed a golf ball, you probably can't get a close-up of this, can you, David? You can get a close-up. Can you get it, Greg? This ball, do you see all the little dimples on that ball? A golf ball has a whole bunch of dimples. I forget how many. I knew it once, but I forgot. A lot. Lots. Lots of dimples. And you have to wonder, how in the world do they ever get around to putting dimples on golf balls? And what's the good of it anyway? Is it just for promotional purposes that says, practice? Well, that's good uh, advice, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> practice. Exactly. So, practice. Um, what happens is this. It turns out they did wind tunnel testing. Ah. And the wind tunnel testing revealed that all the little dots here actually bring the ball into better spin. And because it spins better, it goes further. Because a golf ball typically has a trajectory that goes very short without the spin. When you have just the right amount of spin, it goes way further. And we actually have a graphic that we're going to paint on the screen so the viewers at home can see this. I mean, it's double the distance. It's just amazing. So anyway, the spin is the key. And so I suppose you want to talk about more than that, though. Don't well, you? how do I get, yeah, because I mean, how do I get the ball to spin then? You got to hit it. Well, see how easy that was? Well, wait a minute. I hit it. That doesn't do it. I well, didn't go very far, did it? No, it didn't. No way. Well, I hit it again. Oh, it's better. I think you're getting on to something here. In fact, you know, if you watch his motion, you see a funny thing's going on. Do it in slow mo for him and rotate the hips first. Watch, can you see his hips? Watch his hips rotate. The whole torso rotates. See it? Whoa! The torso rotated, then his arms went back. Hard to see that too, but the arms went back. And the other thing that happened is that the wrists changed their position. So the wrists cocked, the arm went back, the torso and hips turned, and then he brought it all together. And let's see what it does. I'll tell you, I don't think he's quite a pro yet, but he's pretty darn close. Those are good looking shots, Richard. You're just doing a heck of a job for us here. So, what you're telling me is it's first turning my torso. Yeah. You that guys one. probably can't see that ball. I mean, it goes out there so far. Wow. There's guys out there picking up the ball, but they're, oh, fortunately, they're in an enclosed space, huh, like a tractor. That's interesting. They all go. They all go. That's amazing. You know, I'm thinking maybe we ought to get a GoPro on him to see if we can get a little bit more close-up of that ball. Possible? So now we're ready to see the GoPro in action. And here's the pro who's going to make the GoPro go. <laughs> Even with a camera in front of his face, he can still hit the ball. Phenomenal. Wow. The, you viewers at home can't see this, but those balls are going way out there. And this is a seven iron? Yeah. Jeez, he's getting great distance out of a seven iron. I just love it. Wow. Well, the thing about it is, I think we're going to show another video of somebody who is a real pro, and the real pro is going to actually hit a driver. And you'll see it in slow motion. Probably have to show, show it a couple of times so that you can really see what goes on. But it's real interesting because you can identify those different motions we talked about earlier with the rotation of the hips, the rotation of the arms, the cocking of the wrist, and then bringing it all down right through together just in perfect timing. It's timing. Timing is the whole thing. Richard, fortunately, has very good timing. So once you've seen those videos, 
I think we're going to sit down and talk to Richard because I think there's a lot more to Richard than just golf. Now he's sitting up open to the camera on this shot, but I want you to get the essence of what he does. He gets back to the top of the backswing, a good full turn into his right leg, and then just short of parallel, he's going to start to move the left thigh and the left knee over to that yellow line. He squats, he moves left, and that helps him change directions. But watch the left hand. It gets over the golf ball, and the club head is still three feet away. Now that is a lot of lag. He catches up beautifully so that the shaft is right in line with that yellow line at impact, and then he moves on through the hit. In my opinion, the reason Tiger's driving it so well this week is... All right, so now we've seen how the game is played. Now we can talk about other things besides oh, okay. the game. So, uh, so our, what's with this hat I see on you? What hat? I mean, I see you've got this Michigan hat and this Notre Dame hat. I mean, what are you? you got a split personality or something? Oh. Well, I thought I was going to wear, I had to wear a hat because uh, it was going to be so sunny and gorgeous today. So I wore this hat, and this is the hat I wore to watch the Notre Dame-Michigan football game on Saturday. And uh, it turns out that I have degrees from both schools. Ah. So uh, you see me wearing the Michigan hat side, but there's also this other side. And some of my friends refer to that as the dark side. And so sometimes I wear the hat like this to try to indicate, you know. So but that's a side of you that we don't know about. It may be better that you don't know. Because after that game on Saturday, I think I'm just going to get rid of that hat. Probably a good idea. <laughs> I mean, sports, after all, are fun. Sports are what makes the world go round. And I, I can see that you have the sport of golf in really good shape. But I suspect, in fact, I know, that you have a few other sports you like to play. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I play tennis. You know, I enjoy tennis a lot. A lot of biking. A lot really? Of walking. Did I you say that, you, that when you would, yeah, that's right, you bicycle, too. Yes. I right. remember your episode on, on how the wheel goes around. Oh, yeah. And you know that one real well. Yeah. <laughs> the wheel. And you just said that you were doing some hiking, and you got to be, how high did you get? Well, I did some rock climbing last summer, and it got up to about 25 or 30 feet. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, pretty, pretty scary, actually, for me. Wow, but your daughters made it? They made it all the way to the top. The next generation is always better, aren't they? Yeah, it seems so. <laughs> Gosh. Well, I do know about another side of you, uh, even, and that is you like to play other games that involve the pace boards. Yeah, yeah. We play a little bit of bridge. Ah. We play a little bit of bridge, as you know. Yeah, we play together. Yeah, and I also... Uh, of course, our wives are probably better than we are. I, I think so. <laughs> I definitely think so. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I occasionally am out there. I get to play some poker, too, with some friends. Ah. Now, is this high-stakes poker with some of these uh, high rollers from oh, Wabi? Yeah, like quarters, 50 cents. Whoa! High stakes. Big time. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I yeah. love it. Well, you can still afford to play golf, so you must not lose too much. Well, I hold my own. Let's put it that way. <laughs> That's all it takes. I hold my own. Yeah. Well, you know, there are some people, I think, that are watching that are probably suspicious because they say, you know, Richard has an experience in theater, and so they think maybe he's not really playing golf, that he just plays a golfer on TV. Is there anything you'd like to tell us about your theater experience? Well, Art, I've been involved with the uh, Bloomfield Players Community Theater for the last 15 years. Oh, wow. And I started really on a whim 15 years ago. I had no uh, experience in, in acting and being involved in the theater. And yet, one time, a friend of mine asked me if I wanted to try out for a, one of our plays. And I said, sure, why not? Wow. And so I, I tried out, and, you know, all I wanted to get was just to get on the stage and kind of rock my head back and forth. And <laughs> just emote a little bit. Right, huh? exactly. Uh -huh. And anyway, so that was 15 years ago, and ever since then I've been actively involved with the Bloomfield Players Community Theater. Wow. Both uh, on stage, behind the stage, uh, uh, with, with our... Uh, a group as a part of our board. Uh huh. So it's been really a, a, an interesting part of my life because we have uh, really have a really interesting eclectic group of people involved with the <laughs> Bloomfield players. I bet you do. We do. We have doctors, lawyers. <laughs> we have dentists. Wow. We have business people. We have, you know, homemakers. We have and lots of kids. A lot of kids, huh? Yeah. 
Wow. Now, what kind of roles did you play? Any particular ones that stand out in your mind? Did you get well, Romeo? Well, I, I think the first role I had was I was Nachum the Beggar in Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> you know, arms for the poor. Yes. Oh. I've anyway, seen that so many times, and I love my, it every that time. That was my, my, my first role, and uh, maybe it got me a little hooked. Yeah, I'll say. You know, but I really would like to talk a little bit about our next production. Oh, would you? Yeah. What you are know, you producing? We are celebrating our 25th anniversary as a community theater group here in Bloomfield Hills. Wow. And our first production was Music Man, and lo and behold, 2015, we're going to be doing Music Man again. Oh, I love it. And returning so to roots. We're returning to our roots, right? Yeah. So we're actually right now starting to get going with our production. Our first, uh, well, we're having our auditions October 7th and 8th, uh, and uh, we will have our production at the end of uh, January. Wow. And I'm very excited because my, my role this year is I'm producer. Oh, really? Well, I'm actually co-producer. My, my co is uh, Larry Miller. Ah. And uh, Larry's been involved with the Bloomfield Players forever. Wow. In fact, he was Harold Hill in, our, in our, one of our productions. Oh, and Harold so, Hill. So uh, I'm very excited. We're, we're really gearing up. We have a great creative team. And wow. we're just really looking forward to it. That's really good. Well, Richard, you're a man of many talents. The other thing you didn't mention, of course, was that you travel. And in fact, I think we have a graphic that uh, David's going to probably put up to show you and Sue in a wonderful looking spot it's just you can't take a bad picture at that spot right we were in machu picchu uh about four or five years ago um, my friend and i we uh we hiked the inca trail did you down to the temple area oh nice and my wife and my friend's wife took the bus up and we met at the temple oh isn't machu that nice picchu temple and it was just absolutely breathtaking wow and wonderful wonderful trip that's great. Right. Yeah, that trip is good. And I, I've often heard people say that you can't take a bad picture at Machu Picchu. No, so the one really, that they're seeing. You really seeing, can't. <laughs> you really can't. They're all it so good. It truly is one of the, the wow. seven wonders of the world. Well, or eight now, actually. Maybe eight. Now that I've seen your golf swing, maybe nine. Well, I, I don't know. I wouldn't go quite that <laughs> far. <laughs> you know, that could be a figment of your imagination. No, too. it could be. <laughs> Could be, but boy, you sure play a golfer on TV, I'll tell you that. Well, you know, like they say, every now and then you can swing at it. <laughs> yeah, that helps. Well, Richard, I have this one little problem that I have to deal with. You know, Albert Einstein appeared on this program uh, a few weeks ago, and I've been just getting all kinds of flack from him ever since because he says that I just don't quote him enough because he's got opinions about almost everything, sometimes two opinions about the same thing. Um, so then... I, so I thought, okay, maybe i got to find out what are his opinions about golf. So I searched, and let's see what I found here in my searching about Einstein's opinions about golf. Here's what Einstein said about golf. The hardest thing in the world to understand is the income tax. Huh? Oh, I know. <laughs> Albert was not much of a golfer, so that was as close as he had come. But he got a little help from a friend. The friend was Will Rogers. Mm. Here's what Will Rogers says. The income tax has made liars out of the American people more than golf has. <laughs> Very so good. I think maybe that those two guys ought to get together. I think so. They're they, pretty they, that would be an uh, interesting twosome. Wouldn't it, though? Jeez. They'd have to get two more to play golf, though. Right. Maybe get some presidents of the United States or something. I was going to say, maybe we can get some of the presidents. <laughs> Absolutely. Richard, thanks an awful lot for appearing on the program. Sure oh, appreciate welcome. it. Thank you. I really, really enjoyed this. Really a lot of fun. Fabulous. So, Thank you. This has been The Art of Physics, and I hope the viewers enjoy it as much as we did. Uh, I'll see you again. In the meantime, I'm Art Wiggins.